Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending Stahl's Transfer Express webinar, The Best Heat Press for Your T-Shirt Business. Uh, my name is Ryan Rafalke. I'm in inside sales for the past two years. I'll be presenting this webinar today. Um, throughout the uh, webinar, please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Uh, there's a little chat box there, so please type your questions in that chat, chat box. We do have people on staff that are answering questions today. If we don't get all of, all of your questions, uh, feel free to email us at info at transferexpress.com. We'll be sure to answer your questions later. Also, for those in attendance today, watch for an email at the end because we do have an exclu exclusive offer for those who attend the webinar. So today we're going to be talking about the style of heat presses available on the market today, uh, mainly the clam, which is uh, one that opens up um, like a clamshell, uh, also the swing or the draw press style. We're going to answer the question about will an iron work? Do I even need a heat press? Platen sizes and how they can help. We're going to defi define what a platen is as well. Uh, each element of a heat press and how different price points compare. And we're going to also talk about the word threadable or threadability. So we're going to define what that means and really why should you care. One of the most popular styles of heat presses on the market today is called a swing away or swinger. Uh, the swing away or swinger, uh, what's pictured here on the left here is our Hotronics Fusion IQ. Uh, this one allows you to swivel to the left or the right, just above the lower platen. That's where the little red arrow is. That's the press that you plat on or press on. So it goes 180 degrees. Uh, the fusion for this example, this one actually swivels to the right. Uh, the advantages of this particular press is it does allow you a heat-free workspace. So if you are setting a garment on there, and let's say, for example, you happen to be into cutting vinyl, you can layer your vinyl easier than having the press right over you. Um, you can also, um, you know, if you're doing uh, screen printed heat transfers, it just allows you that extra space to where the heating element's not right in front of you. It does allow you the easy access to uh, for layouts of shirts and transfers. Also, uh, right above the press is a uh, over the counter, over the center pressure adjustment. So that's a really good thing. We'll talk about pressure later. Disadvantages with this particular press is it does require more space than a clamshell press. Uh, there's also an extra step. You do have to swing it back once you've sw swung it out, and uh, then you have to lower the platen. So there is a little bit more work involved. Um, also, with this particular press, uh, you do have to typically automatically pull it up after it's uh, gone through its heat printing cycle. So there is another step there as well versus the automatic open. We'll talk about that one next. So uh, one of the definitions we're going to be defining is platen. Uh, platen is the, the flat platform that holds the pad on the bottom of a heat press. And that's what's uh, shown here with the right or the red arrow to the left here. We also have the clamshell style. Uh, the advantages of a clamshell, well, basically the clamshell does allow you to have a heating surface that moves up and down. So the top part is called the heating element or the top platen. Um, what's nice about this one is it does take up less space. There's really only one step. You put your shirt on there, you put your transfer on there, you close it, make sure it locks in place, after the timer goes off, it automatically opens and pops up and you're uh, removing the transfer and it's a really fast process. It's also very lightweight. Um, so you can take this to on-site events. Uh, we have customers that take these to races, um, sporting events, wrestling uh, tournaments. Uh, I have a customer that has a trailer that takes this with them as a uh, for um, different uh, sporting events. and They make a lot of money on the side doing that. Disadvantages, your hands are relatively close to the top platen that heats up here to the left. Um, so there is a p possibility of possibly, um, you know, maybe burning your knuckles. It's rare that that happens, but sometimes people have, have said that they've had the uh, that happen. Uh, your hands are close to the heat, heat when you're positioning. So a little bit hotter than when you're using the, uh, the swinger that we showed before. 
All right, now regarding different heat press sizes, um, there are several on the market today, but the most common ones uh, shown in the far left here is, and also on the bottom left uh, is the 16 by 20. Uh, the 16 by 20 is great for doing um, large garments, um, extra large XXLs, triple Xs, um, and also beach towels and some large bags, things like that. So it's a really large surface. Also, you can do sleeves on the 16 by 20, and, and uh, that's something that is, is very beneficial for the larger platen size. Uh, there's also a 16 by 16, very popular press on the market today, very pop popular press size. Um, there's a 15 by 15, a 9 by 9, and a 6 by 6. These are the most common. So the one in the lower right, that is a 9 by 9. Uh, that one does not have a uh, bottom platen, though. Um, so really, you have to ask yourself, what are you going to use the press for? Uh, if you're doing like a, a left chest piece, uh, the standard size is about 4.5 by 4.5. Uh, the adult front size of a shirt is usually 11 by 11, and the maximum adult can actually be upwards of 11 by 14. And again, going with what are you using your heat press for? So a lot of our customers, they do print shirt tags. Uh, really nice. You can put your own custom logo on your tag, your phone number, website. Uh, washing and drying instructions really helps you if you're doing performance apparel, for example. You can tell the customers, hey, uh, I told, you know, it's 100% polyester, air dry. Don't heat it and uh, don't put it in the dryer. Uh, so shirt tags are really popular. You can do left chest pieces. Like I said before, the four by four or four and a half by four and a half size is pretty common. Um, I've seen them smaller than that though, three by threes and, you know, depending upon the artwork. Um, adult front standard again is 11 by 11. Uh, some people can go, you know, 10 by 10s as well. The maximum screen printed uh, paper size that we have today is 11 and a quarter by 14 for our screen printed uh, transfers. But we do have a water-based ink called AquaTrue, and that size is 12 by 19. So we can get, uh, we can actually gang images on those as well. Um, you can uh, do shoulder prints that can be up to 20 inches wide, which is shown on the right there. Uh, some people will actually do two different. And ag again, going with the heat press sizes, um, uh, we have versatility with interchangeable platens. Uh, so what's really nice about the Hotronics brand is um, we have actually a total of 11 platens that you can interchange. They all have a lever on the bottom, and you just quickly uh, move the lever, and you can pull the platen up and change it out with another one. Uh, the top platen, though, of the heat press, that's the important part. It must be the same size or larger. Uh, so if you invest in like 11 by 15 heat press, it may not allow you the versatility of having a larger bottom platen. Um, you can add versatility uh, to print extra things like shoes, bags, can coolers, uh, youth sizes. Um, you know, I have some customers that are using uh, the 6 by 10 shortstop platen. That's number three on the, uh, the right there. Uh, they'll use that one for uh, baby onesies dog garments, uh, bandanas, socks. Um, they change in just seconds, too. Uh, so again, you, you can um, interchange them. And um, what's nice is we do have packages that do have different platen sizes in them as well. That way we can discuss later. Um, but regarding the 11 total platens, uh, we do have the 11 by 15 that's shown here on the right, uh, the seven inch bagger, which is really good for duffel bags. Um, the 6x10, the shortstop, is good for sleeves, legs, youth garments. 8x10 uh, Tote Master, which is really good for tote bags. And the shoe platen, uh, really good for uh, putting customized names on cleats or numbers, um, all kinds of things. We do have also a 16x20 platen. Uh, that's the largest one. We do have a single sleeve and leg, a double sleeve and leg, a 4x4 a hat bill, and a can cooler, and all those can be found on our website. Also, there are cap presses on the market. Um, cap presses typically have a curved platen to fit the cap. Uh, so the 
uh, very top of the platen is curved and allows you to actually put your transfer on the front of the hat after you've secured it in place and you can press down after the timer goes off. It, uh, this particular press, the, uh, the platen automatically releases, you peel it back and your transfer is good. Um, Hotronics does sell um, cap presses in what's called the max press and also the auto cap. Uh, we have a total of five platens that are interchangeable on the bottom for different cap sizes. The standard one that it comes with, though, fits most caps, which is three and a half inches by six inches. Answering the age-old question, will an iron work? Well, um, there are three main ingredients to a successful heat transfer. Uh, one is the proper time, making sure that you have the timer set correctly. Uh, two, temperature, very, very crucial. Making sure that you have the right temperature makes a huge difference. And then the most important one of all is pressure. Um, pressure is actually accounts for about 80% of the transfer failures that we find today are related to inadequate pressure. Um, so, when you're asking yourself, will an iron work? Um, it could if you have these right three ingredients, if you have the right time, temperature, and pressure. But are you standing on the press, like they show in the picture on the right here? How do you gauge pressure? What level pressure would that be? It's um, virtually impossible to, to really tell the pressure you're getting from an iron. Um, I recently had gone uh, to a 4th of July picnic and my aunt pulled out a pillow that her friend had made her um, using a um, an iron, basically. And the lettering was coming off the pillow. So it was definitely a pressure issue. One of the biggest things to look for if you are considering purchasing a heat press would be the warranty. Uh, Hotronics brand, we do cover, we give you a five-year warranty on the framework. Uh, that includes all the um, the hardware, all the bolts, the nuts, all the pieces and parts. Five years on that framework. Two years on the circuit board, so all the electrical fully covered for two years. One year, parts and labor, and we do give you a free lifetime technical support as well. Um, so we do have a what's called blue ribbon service where we have technicians available 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year seven days a week. They are always at your beck and call. Uh, also, we do give a lifetime warranty on the heating element, which is one of the most important parts of your heat press. So in the event that the heating element ever was to fail, uh, whether you sell it to a friend and it fails on them, that warranty is transferable. It is 100% covered for the life of that heating element. Or you can compare it to some of the other ones where you don't really know what kind of warranty info was included with the machine. Uh, I've talked to customers that have had a, a warranty for 90 days, um, some for a year. Um, some weren't able to answer that question at all. So again, really important to check the warranty and the service that's available too. And one thing too, you know, when you're comparing um, the warranties and the, the different features and benefits of the heat press that you're about to spend a lot of money on um, is really asking your question, you know, yourself, um, who's selling this? Is it Amazon uh, or is it coming directly from the manufacturer? Um, who do you call? Is there a phone number, a website? What happens if this machine breaks down? Uh, what hours are they, are they available? Um, can you order parts? If something goes wrong, do you have to end up spending an, you know, buy an entire heat press again? And um, we actually have a testimonial that came in from one of our customers here uh, that came in from uh, Shauna Campbell, who's the owner of Gotcha Covered Custom Apparel. Uh, she said, uh, when she had emailed us, she said she's a small business owner. She works out of her home and she uh, used to, uh, I, it says, I have used your customer support team several times in the past six years. Problems have ranged from a simple question regarding the machine to, to the tech walking me through step by step, replacing the entire circuit board. I was having an issue with my Hotronics STX 16. 
Uh, that machine by, in particular is the 16 by 16 auto clam. The platen kept coming loose from the adjustment spindle. I researched things online and called Tom this morning to order uh, either a new adjustment spindle, the heat platen cover, or possibly replacing the machine if it couldn't be fixed. After a five minute conversation, me explaining the problem, which I'm sure was confusing enough, not knowing exactly what I was talking about, Tom explained to me exactly what was happening and why. He told me what tools I needed and how to fix it. It took me less than 10 minutes to fix. And again, that's coming directly from a customer, uh, Shauna Campbell. And in this particular um, message that she sends, she did get to talk to Tom, who happens to be uh, one of the managers at Hotronics. So um, it's not just simply a technician that's, um, you know, not with the company a long time. Most of these technicians are the ones that actually make the machines. Um, they are all made uh, in a small town in Pennsylvania called Carmichael's. Uh, it's all American made, 100% uh, American made. And you get to tech talk to the techs that make the machines, which is great. Now in these next six slides that I'm gonna be showing you, uh, they actually came from a video that we posted in May of 2019, presented by our Vice President of Sales, Josh Ellsworth. It's about a nine and a half minute long video. So when you have a chance at the end of this particular presentation, uh, check out our webinar page. There's a link there. Uh, it's gonna be called Hotronics versus Imports. Uh, definitely take the time to spend about nine and a half minutes to watch this video because it will really show you uh, what's on the inside of the Hotronics press and the competition. We actually cut the heating elements in half, which we're gonna show you in the next slides. So one of the most important things is to make sure there are no gaps on the upper platen that could cause uneven pressure. So in this particular um, picture we have here, we actually took a ruler and we measured from the upper um, left corner down to the lower right corner. And on the Hotronics press on the left, there were no gaps in between the heating element and the ruler. So it's completely flat. Um, basically that flatness test allows us to make sure that when we are pressing down on a garment and the heat transfer, we're getting the best pressure we can possible. On the right with the competition press, um, we actually did have a gap that was seen when we did the same ruler test. Uh, same exact uh, yardstick was used upper left, lower right, and there was a considerable gap difference. Uh, what does that mean? Well, when you press that competitor's heat press down, very likely there will be a pressure issue on that portion of the transfer, which could lead to um, inadequate adhesion, uh, which eventually could lead to the transfer falling off and um, not very good results for your customer. Even pressure is just absolutely crucial. So you wanna make sure you know how the press closes. Um, where's the pressure coming from? You wanna make sure that it's making contact evenly onto your, onto your uh, T-shirt and the transfer. Um, the particular Hotronics press that you see on the left, uh, the pressure does come from the top center of the platen. Uh, we do have an over the center pressure adjustment adjustment at the top, allows you to get adequate pressure every time. Uh, the competitor's press that's shown on the right, uh, the pressure adjustment comes from the rear. What that ha what ends up happening is when you tighten that down, you are getting more pressure towards the back as opposed to the front, which can cause pinching and uneven pressure throughout the entire transfer. Again, can lead to failed results on your transfer. Temperature accuracy. You definitely wanna check for consistent temperature from various points on the platen. Uh, so in the example that we show here on the left, we did a test where we, we tested the center and all four corners, so five different spots and we were within just a couple degrees. Uh, we had it set for 340, it came up at 336. So the uh, Hotronics heat press, the accuracy is within three to five degrees of the set temperature. And um, you wanna make sure that um, 
like if you compare, uh, if you're doing this, um, as you see on the right, um, the competitors you can see here was set to 340 degrees. However, the readout was at 249. So a 91 degree difference, a pretty drastic difference in what it's actually telling you. And again, that's gonna lead to a failed transfer. Now Transfer Express does sell a heat, a heat press test kit for $14.95. You can find that on our website. It includes 10 temperature strips to test the temperature accuracy. And we do recommend if you are doing a, a temperature test uh, to do that quarterly every, every three months. One of the biggest differences between a um, Hotronics heat press and a competitor's heat press is the thickness in the heating element itself. So what we did here, we actually ran both our press and the competitor's heat press, their heating elements, through a really big industrial cutter. And again, you can watch this on the video, so I highly recommend to check that out. Um, but as you see here, the one on the left is the Hotronics brand. Now this does have cast in tubular heating elements. So the heating element, heating element is actually cast inside the steel. Uh, and it is actually three quarters of an inch thick. By comparison on the right, the competitors was only one quarter inch thick. So ours is three times thicker. Uh, what does that mean? Well the competition is really not gonna be able to retain heat as long as the Hotronics press. Um, you know, on the surface, before you take the paneling off of the competitor's press and the Hotronics press, they actually look to be the same exact thickness. Uh, but in reality, when you look at the inside, you cut them in half, they're not, they're completely different. Um, it's really like a comparison of a, of a three quarter inch thick piece of steel. If you were to heat that up to 350 degrees, let's say, and you do the same thing with the cookie sheet, which one's gonna retain heat the longest? Obviously the thicker steel, and that's what the Hotronics Advantage offers you. And with our heating coils, um, the heating coil shape, you know, you wanna look at how far apart is the heating element. Uh, so with the Hotronics brand, it is an, it's, it's an S coil, it goes back and forth. And um, as you see here on the left, uh, there is an X coil. Some of the competition have literally just like a big X through. Um, again, the Hotronics has cast in tubular heating elements that are spaced out every two inches to eliminate cold spots. Okay, so really what, what happens when, when you are doing that big X or even the S coil, if you're not spacing it out appropriately, you're getting cold spots on that heating element. Cold spots, of course, are gonna transfer into or relate into a negative transfer situation to where it's not gonna properly adhere. Uh, and again, with the pressure issues combined, you know, all that's gonna make for a bad customer experience. The heating element is, uh, how is, how is the, uh, the temperature measured? Uh, is it accurate? So with Hotronics, we use what's called an RTD probe. It's a resistance temperature device. It accurately measures temperature of the heating element. Uh, on, in comparison, a lot of our competitors, they have a measuring device that's secured to the he heating element with a screw, as you can see out here on the right. Um, you know, and again, when we were doing the measurements, um, we, we did the measurements three slides back, the competitors read 340 degrees. In actuality, when we did the test, it was 249 degrees, 91 degrees off. So do you think those transfers would successfully adhere at that? Probably not. It's kind of like when you bake a cake, the recipe calls for four eggs, you only use two, it's not gonna be as moist. Threadability. Now, one of the Hotronics advantages is we allow you to be able to thread your garment. So uh, threadability allows you to load your garment onto the press and decorate the front, back, or side without removing it from the platen. 
So it allows you for a single allows for a single layer of the shirt to be pressed to avoid seams and other obstructions. It increases productivity for easy uh, front and back decoration. So it's kind of like when you are ironing a dress shirt, you separate the um, you know you unbutton it and you have just the one side of the shirt that you're ironing. That's similar to threadability. So the advantage of that is you're going to be able to decorate your garment. You can do like a number on the back, a transfer on the front. You're not impeding uh, any part of those transfers. Also, it's allowing you this flattest surface possible um, to get the most even pressure throughout the transfer. Now, we have a Hotronics heat press comparison chart that's available for you on this slide here. Um, Hotronics price ranges as low as $750 and as high as $7,300 for your standard heat press. Um, we do sell our um, you know, cap presses on here, and every single one of these um, heat presses will tell you what it can be used for, how it opens, the voltage, the pressure, how it's read or how it's, how it's um, adjusted. The digital display information is on here. Uh, whether or not you can have the heat press on a counter caddy or not, or, or, or shelves, shelves can be, you know, with the caddies as well. Um, and it does talk about the platens that you can um, interchange with them as well. Um, but really what you need to look for when you are purchasing a heat press is, you know, what's going to be your return on investment? Um, is it going to make your business more efficient? Is it going to provide proven and positive results? So these are the things to really ask yourself. Uh, an example would be if you were to spend $2,000 on, let's say, the auto open clam heat press. We have package deals that are available. Uh, right now, there's one for $2,095. But let's just say for sake of argument, it's $2,000. Okay. It comes with a five-year warranty. And the average, um, so if you look at it from $2,000, you spread that over the course of five years, that's $400 a year that you would need to make back in order to recoup that money. So the average cost of a shirt and transfers comes out to about $5 on average. Most customers are selling them for at least $15. So let's say that they're making a $10 profit. So really in that situation, you'd only really have to make about 40 shirts a year to recoup the $400 yearly amount that it would take to pay off your press over the course of five years. Most customers I talk to, they do at least 40 shirts in their first order with family reunions, baseball championships, cheerleading events, you name it. So it really is not that large of an investment. But on the, on the flip side, one of the biggest questions you ask yourself when you are investing in a heat press is, what is the cost of losing business? What's the cost of lost quality, lost reputation? What happens if I lose my customers if their transfers fall off after the first wash? So, you know, there was a marketing email that came out recently that talked about an investment in a heat press being the only piece of equipment you need for your t-shirt business is a heat press. But virtually everything is riding on this one piece of equipment. All right, so thank you for attending. Our um, next webinar is going to be um, on Thursday, August the 8th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so please log in again for the next one. Uh, it's going to be called Marketing Your T-Shirt Business. On uh, this last slide, I, I want to thank you again for attending. Um, but definitely stay in touch. We're definitely here to help you grow your business. You can email us at info at transferexpress.com. Highly recommend to read and subscribe to our blog at uh, blog.transferexpress.com. Definitely watch our videos and, and previous webinars. There's a lot of information, a wealth of knowledge, and it's all yours for free. Uh, as I was saying earlier, the um, email, uh, uh, the webinar that we did recently with the video from uh, Josh Ellsworth, our vice president of sales, is called Hotronics versus the Imports. That one is probably one of the best videos I've seen in a long time, really showcases the difference between a good quality press versus 
one that's poorly made. Um, visit us at trade shows. Uh, we do go to trade shows throughout the entire country. Um, if you go to the Transfer Express website, you scroll down to the very bottom, it says company info. There's a tab that says events. Click on events and it'll tell you all the shows we're gonna be at. Contact us on social media to Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all that. Uh, you can call us the old fashioned way by the phone number there listed 800-622-2280. We are here 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. Monday through Friday Eastern time. Or if you need, you can also fax us. We Believe it or not, we still do accept faxes. So again, I wanna thank you all for attending. Um, for those that did stay uh, throughout the, uh, the presentation, we are gonna be sending you an exclusive offer uh, through um, your email. So definitely check that out. And again, if you have any questions, please, please, please ask us uh, through the chat box here or email us at info at And thank you so much for attending. Have a great day.